Klingai was really never the same volcano. Every year it would be a little bit different. Oh no! And also the next big explosive eruption just this past year. Wow! <laughs> Deep in the Maasai country, a volcano grows from the bottom of the Grift Valley. This is not an ordinary volcano. Its unique magma is responsible for the weirdest volcanic crater on Earth. Its ashes have contaminated rift lakes, making the most poisonous lakes in the world. In these acrid lakes, only flamingos can live. And they come in millions. Arusha, Tanzania. A group of volcano chasers prepare for the expedition to a remote East African volcano. Although Neolengai has been explosively erupting now for several months. What are you looking for? <laughs> for ice. For ice. <laughs> Why? Ah, because you need it. Ah, it's my tripod. It's on rice. The most important shot. Yeah. See? Here's our receipt for food. The trip for Lingai classified as an expedition because of its remoteness and camping on the top of the volcano for a few days. There's no water on top and that's one of the most difficult things to bring with. Also food and camping equipment needs to be brought up as well as personal belongings of the expedition members because of a very strenuous, grueling climb. This requires the use of local Maasai warriors as porters. The climb starts at about 2 in the morning through dry riverbeds with a truckload of Maasai warriors, some of them wearing traditional clothes. This creates a feeling of excitement and suspense when the group starts climbing the active volcano in the darkness and nobody has any idea what it is going to do when they get to the top. After two hours driving at the small trading village on Toambu, a police patrol makes sure the old landy is roadworthy. And it has to be. In the village, the expedition needs to turn into a really abdominable truck, partly stony but mostly drifts of fine volcanic ash, deep wheel routes, and generally difficult driving conditions. At places, Trucks often disappear or simply cease to exist.
the Angarka village, the expedition is briefly stopped to pay a toll fee to pass. No one knows what is it for. The roads, if any, are atrocious. Driving down into Ingarka Basin, a depression formed within the rift. There's a chance to see old O'Neill and Guy Volcano soon. Fred can't wait to see the mountain he has not seen for two years. This is his twelfth visit. I've always liked volcanoes ever since I was a kid and went to Yellowstone National Park. And so I tried to go visit volcanoes when I was traveling and most of them would be dead when I climbed them because of the, uh, just the, that's what happens to most volcano chasers. They don't get to see eruptions too often. But then with Lingai, I found that every time I went, I could see eruptions. And also just the general setting of the mountain, the, its location in the Rift Valley and the uh, Maasai who live in the area. And I just couldn't wait to see what was going to happen with every passing year, how the crater was going to change. So I just got kind of addicted to it over the years. And just I constantly wanted to know what was happening on top. So for that reason, I came back as often as I could. And also I was interested to know when the next big explosive eruption would be, uh, knowing that there would be another one in the future, but not knowing when. And so that question has been answered just this past year. Not far from the Lengai base, the expedition sets up the camp. Because the volcano is in explosive phase, they have to observe the behavior before attempting the conquest. Safety permitting, the aim is to camp on the crater for a few days to observe its activity closely. Climbing Old Doini Lengai is like hiking the sky towards the sun. The slope is so steep that one thinks if it were steeper, it would have been a vertical wall. Six to eight hours of hiking is usually required to complete the ascent to the summit at 2,886 meters. With the elusive summit often in clouds, the feeling of the never-ending climb is frustrating. It doesn't seem so what? difficult. In a, technical, in a technical sense, I mean, I don't see, if, if you wanted to go steep, you wanted to go right up, you know, without any zigzagging, that would be very, very exhausting. It's harder than it looks. Yeah, that would be very hard, but why not zigzag? Because there are gullies, there are yeah, deep there gullies. There are gullies everywhere. What is the average steepness you estimate? 40 degrees or something? 35? The trouble is that you only need one really, really steep place to cause you a lot of trouble even if the yeah, rest of it yeah, is not yeah, so bad. Tell me about it. Yeah. Yeah. it is not a technical climb, but it is a very demanding and sometimes dangerously steep walk and scramble. This requires a great deal of fitness and determination. Actually, the climb is a long grueling slog, up to 45 degree or more, composed of loose pyroclastics. On foot and often on all fours, the constant fear of falling is ever present. If it's bare rock, it should be okay. But no, there wouldn't be much bare rock. No, it, it it's mostly loose material. Yeah, it's, it's so in places so you, you, you may make exhausting. one step and slide three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very exhausting, yeah. And especially now, I don't know, maybe it's even, you sink deep, it would yeah. be even more, more yeah. you know, like climbing sand dune. Yeah. And then coming back would be even worse, because you would have eroded your own path. The steepness of the mountain is so arduous to hike 
that many people give up just by looking at the mountain or during the first easier half of the hike. It is not recommended for those with balance problems. If you fall, you will probably bounce all the way down to the bottom. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and hit the bell down below to be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you for your support.